everyone, it's B. Now that it's officially summertime, I thought it'd be fun to talk about one of my favorite games to play in the summer and one of my favorite Sims spin-off games, The Sims 2 Castaway, and a little equally a summary bonus, The Sims 3 Island Paradise. The 2000s were truly a time where it seemed like summer would never end. Movies featuring mermaids and surfer boys with puka shell necklaces and spiky hair with frosted tips were a dime a dozen. And popular TV shows of the time included things like Survivor and Lost, shows about being stuck on a deserted tropical island and overcoming challenges. It seemed like being trapped on a deserted tropical island was kind of the hot new trend in the 2000s for some reason, and just about everybody was trying to get in on the action, including The Sims. The original Sims 2 was released in 2004, and The Sims 2 Castaway was released just three years later in 2007 for a huge number of consoles including the Wii, Nintendo DS, PS2, and PSP. I personally have the PSP version of this game, and for the past few years I've taken my PSP and my copy of The Sims 2 Castaway to the beach with me every summer because I think it's just the perfect summery game and I couldn't think of a better time to make a video about it than now. Because this game seriously makes me want to be sitting in the sand listening to Sugar Ray and drinking out of a coconut with a straw and a little umbrella in it. I mean, I want to do those things anyways, but it just makes me want to do those things more. So, the general premise of The Sims 2 Castaway is that your crew sets sail on a boat, destination unknown, and after just a few short moments the skies darken and your Sims become shipwrecked on a deserted island with only two goals, learn to survive and find your way home. Easy peasy. From then on, it's up to you to have your sim collect food, build shelter, find their crewmates, and find a way off the island. Though there are some similarities to the main sims games, like having to fulfill your sims' needs, the way in which you do these things is entirely different than any other entry in the sims series. For food, you either have to harvest fruits and vegetables from the wild, grow your own, or spear hunt for fish in the ocean and cook what you find over a fire. Shelter tools and clothes need to be made from scratch using a craft table and resources found on the island, and socialization, more often than not, is done by befriending the chimps that inhabit the island after giving them bananas. In terms of Sims games, it would be pretty standard if it weren't for the fact that unlike a normal Sims game, The Sims 2 Castaway has an actual plot with a beginning and an end, as well as plenty of goals to complete along the way to move the story along. The primary goal of the game, as I mentioned before, is to find a way to escape the island, or as it turns out, islands, plural, because there are actually three separate islands, plus one extra bonus island that your sims will need to escape before they can find their way home. The first island is called Shipwreck Island, which you're not on very long before discovering an ancient pier that prompts you to build a raft so that you can reach the next island. After getting on the raft, your sim arrives at Airplane Island, which gets its name from the airplane located in the island's jungle. There's obviously no way to know for sure, but I don't think it's a coincidence that The Sims 2 Castaway, which just so happens to have a whole island called Airplane Island, came out well lost, an extremely popular TV show where a plane crash lands on a deserted island and a bunch of people have to learn how to survive on the island while also figuring out how to get back home, just so happened to also be popular at the time. Just saying. <laughs> Anywho, on Airplane Island, your sim, which you started the game with, meets up with their crewmates. While trying to figure out how to get off Airplane Island, the sims can build their relationships with one another, and the option to form a tribe becomes available. Again, no way to know for sure, but is it a coincidence that The Sims 2 Castaway came out while reality TV show Survivor, where tribes of contestants, complete challenges on an island, was super popular? Um, probably not. <laughs> Just saying. Tribes can be super useful, as tribe members can use the home tiki, which is kind of like your crew's home base to sign up for different tasks like collecting building material, fishing, or cooking food. On Airplane Island, your sim also finds an airplane radio, which will come in handy later, and after finding the second beach on Airplane Island, you're prompted to build a canoe to transport you to the third island, Volcano Island, where you begin to find evidence of a lost civilization, the Llama People. For those who are unaware, llamas are a recurring theme throughout the Sim series, appearing as the national animal of Sim Nation, as the cheat code gnome in the console version of The Sims 3, the school mascot for the university in The Sims 2 and The Sims 3, and llamas are featured in a huge amount of bivode items in every single Sims game. The Sims 2 Castaway seems to tell the origin of why llamas are so important to the Sims as the ancient llama people who once inhabited Volcano Island worshipped them. Behind an ancient door on the island, your sim finds an enormous temple filled with molten lava and the llama people's ceremonial forge. After fixing the forge, a new island rises out of the sea, which is your sim's final destination should they choose to continue on the journey. Your sim is faced with three options on Volcano Island. 
they can either build a boat and sail back to civilization, climb to the top of Volcano Island, and send out an SOS using the airplane radio that they picked up on the previous island and be returned to civilization, or if they're not quite ready to give up on the adventure, they can continue on to the fourth island, Crystal Island. Crystal Island is exactly what it sounds like. It's an island full of gigantic green crystals and treasure, and it's also completely optional. Regardless of whether you choose to end the game by making a boat or by using the airplane's radio, the game ends with a few shots of your sim and their crew sailing home and arriving back at their houses to a huge pile of overdue bills, which is super funny and I've honestly never really thought about it before, but that probably would be the unfortunate reality of returning home after being stuck on a deserted island for who knows how long. I know that all of that doesn't really seem like it would take all that long to complete, but it is important to remember that this is a Sims game that we're talking about. Having to constantly worry about fulfilling your Sims needs is basically a full-time job, so it can be difficult to make progress completing tasks when you need to stop so frequently to find food, cook, sleep, go to the bathroom, bathe, and socialize. The Sims 2 Castaway also provides lots of side quests in the form of messages and bottles and mysterious books that your Sim finds. You can also do all the usual Sims things like get married, spend way too much time building and decorating your house, or hut, I guess, and woohoo, but only on the PSP version for some reason. The other good part of this game, kind of similar to the other Sims spin-off game that I covered on my channel, The Sims Medieval, is that outside of the gimmick of having a special theme and goals to complete, it still works perfectly fine as a regular Sims game, especially if you're a fan of survival and crafting type games as well. Technically, you don't really have to end the game or even progress the story if you don't feel like it. If you would rather just live out your island fantasies and set up shop on one of the game's beaches and just keep on upgrading your shelter and get married and treat it like a normal Sims game, nobody's stopping you. In general, I think that The Sims 2 Castaway is just so perfectly 2007 because I think it really captures the summery, deserted island survivor fantasy that so many TV shows and other forms of media were obsessed with at the time, and overall it's just a really neat and interesting spinoff. I think if you like Survivor or Lost, or you were a big fan of the exploration parts of The Sims 3 World Adventures expansion pack, or if you're just bored and looking for a game to play this summer, you should totally look into finding a copy of The Sims 2 Castaway, especially since it's on so many different consoles, so you're almost bound to have access to at least one of them, and copies of this game aren't very expensive these days. And before we move on, I just wanted to mention that I've never actually seen Lost before, so if there are any other similarities besides the plane on Airplane Island, feel free to let me know down below. I promise I'll get around to watching Lost eventually. I've been watching The O.C. lately, and Lost is next up on my list after that, so if I find anything I'll let you know. There was also a whole separate game called The Sims Castaway Stories, which was released one year after The Sims 2 Castaway and was part of a series of Sims spin-off games which were meant to be more story-driven. Castaway Stories has two story modes, one of which is called Shipwrecked and Single and has the objective of finding love on a tropical island. In general, The Sims Castaway Stories looks and plays much more like the normal Sims 2 that you'd be used to playing on a PC than The Sims 2 Castaway does, so if that's more your thing, you might like Castaway Stories a bit more than The Sims 2 Castaway. Since this is a summer-themed video, I'd like to quickly talk about The Sims 3 Island Paradise. The Sims 3 is already a very summery game, in my opinion. I'm not sure if I just think that because I have a lot of memories of playing this game during the summer when I was younger, or because Double Vision by 303, the most bitchin' summer song of 2010, has a Simlish cover in this game. But to make it even more summery, the 10th expansion pack that The Sims 3 would receive would make it even more summery. Er. The Sims 3 Island Paradise isn't a standalone game the way that The Sims 2 Castaway is. It was an expansion pack released for The Sims 3 in June of 2013 and is one of my personal favorite expansion packs for the game. I remember the release date of this expansion pack just so happened to line up with my last day of school that year and my mom surprised me with it when I got picked up from school that day, which was super exciting and I basically spent the entire summer playing it. The Sims 3 Island Paradise was a pretty massive expansion pack and it added all sorts of new things to the game. You could buy and use a Boat, including houseboats, which you could also live on. You could build a resort with huge pools and awesome slides. You could explore the seas to find hidden islands. You could have a chance encounter with a kraken. You could go underwater and scuba dive, which actually unlocked a whole separate area which you could explore. And my personal favorite addition, you could become a mermaid by eating mermaid kelp, which is an item you can obtain after becoming friends with a sim who is already a mermaid. I would also like to mention that the mermaid tails are customizable. You can make them whatever color you want, and being a mermaid also comes with the added perk of being able to stay underwater for as long as you want. You still have a pair of normal legs when outside of water, and luckily you don't just suddenly grow a tail when it's raining out like you're in H2O or something, which is also good. 
Mermaid Sims also have quite a few abilities, including the ability to summon sharks to attack other Sims. There are also equivalents of this expansion pack for The Sims 1, 2, and The Sims 4, but I personally find that The Sims 3 Island Paradise expansion pack is by far the best and most fun, and I'm not just saying that because I have a personal vendetta against The Sims 4, which I do. Alrighty, let me know down in the comments if you've ever played The Sims 2 Castaway or The Sims 3 Island Paradise, or just tell me what your favorite summary game is. So, anywho, as always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a good day or night or whatever time it is, wherever you are, and I will see you all next time.